IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, North Body Shop, Park National Bank, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Sheridan Funeral Home, Buckeye Toyota, and Standing Stone Bank. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Interface Video Productions Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart, alongside Tim Shoemaker tonight. We are excited to be coming to you live from Burn Union High School for a Mid-State League Cardinal Division battle between the Burn Union Rockets and the Fisher Catholic Irish. And Tim, I don't know that I've ever been more excited to be at a high school football stadium watching a high school football game than I am tonight. When you look back just two weeks ago, we didn't know that we would even be here. Now, the craziness of what's all going on since last March has been quite an experience for everybody, but I'm glad for the young people that they get an opportunity to compete, go out and play, along with the coaching staffs that work hard, and everybody gets to be involved because we've talked a lot over the years that a football game is a community event, yeah. and, and it's, it's important. Wins and losses will be wins and losses, but the bottom line is we get competition tonight, and I like it. Tonight's keys to the game brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability. Since 1979, owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Now, obviously, hard to give keys to the game when we haven't seen either team, and really, these teams have limited live action, uh, both just one scrimmage. Yeah, everybody's been under kind of the same gun, though. So, you know, they're all about the same. And, uh, you know, what I would say, Jared, it's whoever can get a mistake from the other team and take advantage of it. You know, you and I talked about that, a turnover, a big return, something of that nature that can really, you know, give momentum. Had a chance to uh, communicate uh, through email with both these coaches and, and – they ex both expressed the same sentiment about just the excitedness to be able to do this. Uh, you know, they're both thrilled that uh, they've been given the opportunity to have a six-game season with the potential to even play a full ten games uh, beyond the, the playoffs. Um, it, you know, and, and they've really talked about the senior leadership and the leadership of their veteran players. They, they've talked about how these kids are resilient. Yes, we're in strange times, but these kids are resilient and they're ready to go. Young people always are more resilient than adults, Jerry, yeah, you're in, right. in my opinion. They seem to bounce back better. They, You know what? They need some uh, attention at times to help them focus, but they, but they got to be excited. And I really like what I saw when the Burn Union kids walked onto the field from outside the fence there carrying the American yeah. flag, Jared. I really like that. Under these circumstances that we're involved in in this day and age, that was great to see. Absolutely. One other person uh, very excited in this stadium tonight, that would be uh, Luke Timmis, head football <laughs> coach at Fisher Catholic. He has been a longtime uh, Fisher Catholic uh, player, teacher, assistant coach, and finally getting his shot as the head coach, and uh, we're excited for him. And I know he's uh, probably got a lot of butterflies over there on that Fisher Catholic side. Yeah, he, he gave worries to a lot of people over the years as a player, so yeah. he would like to do that as a coach also. But I'll tell you one thing about the first game, Jared, you've ever <laughs> coached, and you've been through that. Yep. I can still remember vividly parts of the first game I ever coached, in, and I'm not going to tell people how long ago <laughs> that was, but of all the games you get an opportunity to be involved in, there's nothing like the opener. You're right. And the first time you get to walk out there, and guess who they're going to listen to? <laughs> oh, I'm not making suggestions yeah. anymore. I'm now making decisions. Tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They've been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. The Irish won the toss, and they've elected to kick off. It'll be number seven, J.J. Vio, a sophomore kicking off for the Irish. And back deep for the Rockets will be number 15, Sammy Abna, and also Bray Friesner, number two to return. Field in great shape. However, we've had a lot of rain over the last couple of days, and in fact, it looks like it's started to rain now. Yes, it has. Uh, at least it's not a you know frog strangler we got going out there. We just <laughs> got a good solid rain, but the field does look great, Jared. Lots of changes uh, to talk about. Uh, we'll get through some of those tonight as we go along in the contest. Kickoff taken at the 10-yard line by Omna coming to the near sideline and brought down. Nice job on the Return by Omnon, a good tackle by the Irish, number 
72. Russ, sorry about that. That's Jack Tenza, number 22. Yeah. Looked like he had a good lane right there. They had good initial blocking, but Tenza came through and made a nice tackle on the special teams. I think the one thing we really, you know, let people know also, Jared, is that the officials are going to handle the ball a lot less. Yes. And you're going to see this here. Uh, if you just pay attention to, you know, we're used to the umpire spotting the ball. We're used to officials carrying it and handling it. You're not going to see that. They're going to double check their spots, and there's a lot of mechanics go with that, and we don't need to go in all those details. But it's going to be kind of interesting for us to watch those changes. It'll be Nate Nemeth at quarterback for the Rockets, six foot, 190 pound sophomore. Nemeth gives it left side. Bray Friesner. Freezing up across the 30 and will be brought down near the 32-yard line. In on the tackle, Chase Springer, number 47, along with Kavanaugh Frank. Tell you what, I had a chance to talk to Coach Timmis last night, and one of the things that he was very excited about, one of the players is Kavanaugh Frank. Kavanaugh comes in, he's a junior. He's really stepped up. They lost a lot from last year's team. A lot of seniors graduated, some guys not playing this year, and he's really been impressed with the leadership of Kavanaugh Frank. Here's right up the middle, once again, Friesner, and he'll get near the, right about the 36-yard line to bring up a third down and about two. Look at that, shoe. How about the, uh, the down marker? Lit up over there on the far side. Got to like that here at Burn Union. Yeah. Is it just Much for, easier to is see. It, is it just fluorescent or? I think it might be lit. Actually have a. Have a, some lights a in lighting it. quality to it. Hmm. Yeah, it is quite clear. Big third down right here for the Rockets offense. Third down and one. Funny watching the center walk out of the is. football, isn't it? Rain starting to pick up quite a bit now. Nemeth back to pass. He's got pressure, and he's going to be sacked in the backfield, leading the charge for the Irish is number four, Kavanaugh Frank. Well, you just talked about his leadership, but I really like the effort right there. He just beat the blocker and pursued the quarterback and, and pulled him down from the backside, Jared. Are you surprised on a third and about one that they went for a pass right there? Not really. I mean, who knows right now early in the year. You know, sure. Coaches are still trying to figure out their strengths, what might be a weakness. Uh, you know, we talked together about – how much little 11-on-11 11 11 time they probably had. Yeah. Friesner will punt it away. Alex Smith stands at his own 35-yard line to receive. Good snap. Nice punt by Friesner. Not a lot of hang time. And Smith, I don't know if it touched him. He better get on it. He picks it up back at about the 18-yard line. Smith has a lane up the far sideline. Smith cuts back to the middle to the 50. A great return by Alex Smith up across midfield to the 44-yard line. That might be the big play that we were talking about, you know, in the pregame as a key because that was a big return yes, off was. of a good punt. We talked about Kavanaugh Frank, a couple of other guys that uh, Coach Timmis really mentioned. Alex Smith is one of those. Also Jack Tenza and, of course, his quarterback, Colton Yeager. Well, and the beauty of sports is – those are the kids that you kind of know and expect it from, yeah. but there's always kids on your team that step up and all of a sudden, you know, gain an identity. You're going to look out of that offensive line. You're going to see Avery Hickman at five foot 158, but flanking him, you've got Jonathan Crook and Waylon Yeager. They go 251 and 253, and about six foot six foot two. So what you're saying, we might lose him in the play? <laughs> Possibly. Here's Yeager coming near side. A good open field tackle there by. The Rockets, number 12, Nate Nemeth. <clears throat> Second down and two. Rain really coming down now. But I guarantee you, if you ask anybody sitting in the stands, they don't care. They're just happy to be here watching high school football. I agree. But I don't think they really wanted to have <laughs> this. It wouldn't be 2020 without this, would it? No, our good friend Marion, you know what? We miss him, don't we? Yeah, he would be looking up with a smirk on his face <laughs> at us. Jaeger sends Smith in motion. Might have been a busted play. Jaeger going to keep it himself and get up near the 40, and we've got a flag on the far side. Uh, I, I thought it was a procedure shift issue. We'll get the call from the official. 
You got to remember, they're trying to figure out all their mechanics, too. You're right. Too. Yeah. You see the orange bean bag on the field. That's how they spot the football, and the, the center will bring the ball to the line every time. Yeah, there is a procedure on the offense, not enough on the line of scrimmage. Our officials tonight, our referee is Jeff Haar. Headlinesman is Tom Madden, the umpire Jason Snyder, line judge is Ethan Rittenhouse, and the back judge Mac Stottridge. After the penalty, second down and about 13 for Fisher Catholic. Jaeger out of that pistol. He's got Kavanaugh Frank to his left. Jack Tenza behind him. And he's going to pitch it out to Alex Smith, trying to get wide. He's got pressure back there, and that's going to be a huge loss for the Irish. Yeah, a little miscommunication, and, and Burn Union's defense read it and pursued the football really well. Well, if you, if you noticed, right out of the snap, Jaeger turned to his left, yep. looked like the handoff. Jack Tenza went to his right, so he just pitched it out to Alex Smith, and well, that's a big-time loss. Yeah, you're going to mm. see these kind of things with – with, with the lack of, you know, repetition right. that the teams have had and the players have had. I think the greatest improvement you're going to see in a team this year is from week one to week two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we talked before we went on the air. It, it, it's, it's tough when you have limited numbers to even go live in practice. Yeah, it's, it's just not the same. <clears throat> Third down and 22 for Fisher Catholic. Jaeger sends Frank in motion, and he tried to hand it off to him and lost the football. Jaeger was able to fall on it. It'll bring up a punt situation for Fisher Catholic. <clears throat> well, the burn defense did their job. They backed them up almost, what, 15 yards? Yeah, they did a great job there. You know, and <clears throat> after giving up the big return, the defense has held field position here, Jared, and now they're going to look to see on their second drive if they can be a little more effective. Back to receive the punt will be Sammy Omna and Friesner. Kavanaugh Frank is the long snapper, and it will be Jaeger, Colton Jaeger, the quarterback, to punt it away. <clears throat> He'll stand at his 30. Low snap. He gets it. And he's just going to have to tuck it in and run. He's got a little room over there on the far side. Not going to be near enough for the first down, but he made something out of nothing. Yeah, just too far to go to gain a first down, but a good choice is pick it up and get what you can. And when you think about it, I mean, he got up to, looks like the 47-yard line. Who knows? A punt there, he could have shanked it. They could have had a good return. So that's, oh, yeah. not a, that's not a bad decision right there at all. No, that's the best decision he had. And he, like we said, just make the best of it. And he you know, pretty much got back to the original line of yeah. scrimmage. Chris Prince checks into the ball game. We'll get our first look at him. The big six foot one, two twenty five senior running back for the Rockets. Where's number seven? He will stand to the left of quarterback Nate Nimeth. First and ten Rockets at their own forty seven yard line. Nimeth will tuck it and run himself. Trying to get to the outside. He breaks one tackle. Nimeth to the 40, and finally brought down there by Kavanaugh Frank at the 36-yard line. You know what set that up? He made a really good initial fake. Yes, he did. And it pulled the defense toward the fake and opened it up, and uh, he showed his ability to run. They bit toward the, the fake. Looked like he was going to pass to Chris Prince, but he tucked it and ran. A nice decision there by Nimeth. First and 10 Rockets. Here's Prince on the carry. Prince over that left tackle. He's a big man to bring down. Prince inside the 20, inside the 15, and brought down at about the 13-yard line. Runs hard. He's got a big body. But the Fisher kids have to make sure if he has the football, you've got to be sure of your tackles. You just yep. can't try to reach an arm tackle or an ankle. He's going to run through that. First and 10. Looks like they spotted it at the 15-yard line. Clock rolls at 6.19 to play in the first quarter. No score. But Burn Union knocking on the door. 
Nemeth pitches it out to Friesner. Friesner trying to get outside. And a good job by the Irish, but they're not wrapping. They're hitting, but not wrapping. Yeah, good pursuit. Not very good tackling in that play. Did you notice Nemeth pitched the ball with two hands? Yes. They ran the option left. Yep. You know, he tried to read the end, which is what you do, but he pitched it with two hands. He's going to be a good one. Just a sophomore. Has good size, six foot, 190 pounds. He started last year as a freshman. Second down and six. Nimeth looking to pass. Dumps one over the middle, and it's through the hands or behind his intended receiver. Yeah. Intended for State. He knows he just kind of rushed that one. Did a great job, opened up a passing view. No pressure because he had made a good fake again. He's done a very good job of faking with the football, which, again, is a fundamental skill that sometimes is overlooked. Bring up a third down. You have to think that uh, regardless if they have a good kicker or not, in this rain, this was four down territory. I don't know if they would want to try a, a field goal. Well, I, in this situation. I, I would doubt that. The holder would probably have to come on with a snorkel. <laughs> I mean, we've had a lot of rain today. We have. Here's Prince right up the middle. He's hit hard, but he's still going and finally brought down near the 10-yard line. And a short pickup on the play. Going to bring up a fourth down and five. Yeah, real good effort by Prince and a real good effort by the Fisher defense is that they continued to stay with it after the initial hit. Coach Tony Herps looking to get a play into his team on fourth and five at the 10-yard line. 5.27 to play in the first quarter, no score. Nemeth will send Sammy Omni out to the left. Three receivers out to the right side with Bray Friesner. The far side. Here's Nemeth back to pass. He's got pressure. Good block to give him extra time. And it's tipped in the end zone. A great job on the defensive side. Boy, I thought he could have run for the first down, Jared. I don't know about a touchdown, but it appeared to me that he had room to run it. He's, he's elusive. Simon Messerly did a great job <laughs> defensively there to tip it away in the end zone. So good job by the Irish defense. It looked like uh, Burn Union had a chance to put one in there, and Irish defense steps up. They did. They bent, but they didn't break there, that's for sure. Okay. Is that their ball too? Okay. Okay, we're at the 10. First and 10, Fisher Catholic at their own 10-yard line. Here's the give to Frank. Not much there. Second down. <clears throat> Less than one on the game. On second down, here's the give to Alex Smith around the right side. And again, not much there. Good defensive pursuit there by the Rockets. Now we've got a late flag. as they were getting untangled in the pile. We'll see who that's on. Well, the, the side judge showed <laughs> unsportsmanlike um, conduct. Personal foul. Unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike conduct on number 64. That's his first. Yeah. 15 yards, yeah. first down. That you just can't do. You're right. No, you just gave him yardage and a first down. You got to have enough control and discipline not to have that happen. Coach Herps goes out to find out what was said. That's a big penalty on Burn Union. That gets yep. the Irish uh, against uh, – their backs were against the wall there, and that brings them all the way out 
to the seventh or the uh, twenty-six yard line. Yeah, I'm sure he's not real pleased with that. No way. First and ten, Irish. Jaeger sends Smith in motion, rolling out to the near side. A flag comes in, and Jaeger going to be hit and brought down. Looks like the initial hit made by Bray Friesner. Illegal procedure on the offense. Not enough on the line of scrimmage. Those are all alignment issues that, you know, got to be corrected. Yeah. They have to know where they need to be, and that just comes with repetition. Yep. That's the beauty of game one here, Jared. You're going to get film. Yeah. And, and there's nothing teaches like film does. dealt with a lot of players over the years as you know and a lot of times I would bring them in and show film and, and ask them a question you know is that is is that what you uh, thought you were doing <laughs> no and you know what it, it you know you straighten it out at that point yep first and 15 Kavanaugh Frank in motion here's a handoff to Jack Tenza and he picks up maybe one he's hit almost immediately when he got the handoff trying to see the number I think it's that a 54 it's hard with the uh, 64, I think. That's uh, Carson Kellenbarger for the Rockets. Their, their jerseys are really tough to read with the dark jersey and dark number. Yeah, the charcoal and maroon, it doesn't stand out. Maybe we can get some of that light from that two over there and put it on <laughs> their numbers. Second down and 14, I believe. We might have a timeout on the play or timeout on the field. Timeouts tonight are brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. This gives us a chance, uh, Shu, to talk uh, about a, a few of the changes, the major changes. You had a chance to talk to Tom Stoughton, a yep. uh, well-known football referee around Fairfield County. He, he shared with you some of the things that are different this year. Well, Tom's a, Tom's a you know an assigner now, and, and, and you know he is a great football official as 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 a, as a referee. He now signs for the OCC, and, and he's always very open to helping us. But you see right here, you know, this is not an issue tonight, the number of players, but players can go from the 10 to the 10 now. That way they have no excuse for not being socially distanced. Yeah. Halftime is just 10 minutes, and you get that three-minute warm-up, and every player is going to have their own water bottle. And the offensive team will keep their ball. Yeah. We'll, we'll come back and revisit that here after this play. Alex Smith in motion. Quick give to Jack Tenza. Tenza almost broke out of that tackle. And if he would have, he had open field. Third down now and 12 for the Irish. Clock rolls down to 239 and counting here in the first quarter. Six-game regular season followed by playoffs for every team, and then teams have the opportunity to finish out uh, the, the, the remainder. They can play up to ten games. But how ironic that uh, in your six-game season, obviously it's only league games, but that you open up with what uh, many call this a rivalry game in the Mid-State League Cardinal. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you're going to play sometime, so. Yeah. Get your team ready and go play. Jaeger pitches it out, and it goes through the hands of the pitch man, and I think the Rockets have it. I think you're right. Yeah. Burn Union recovered it. Looked like 53 for the Rockets. Chris Delgado comes away with it. You know, we'll talk about the playoff stuff uh, in between periods here and, and let the fans view and see what it is because uh, I'm not sure everybody's 100% aware yeah. of, you know, what it's going to look like here after six games. Of course, these two teams, both in the Mid-State League Cardinal. Irish finished to uh, overall 8-3 last year. First-round playoff loss to Harvest Prep. Finished 3-1 and one in the Mid-State League Cardinal. In this matchup last year, the Irish won 43-0. The Rockets finish 5-5, five and five, and here's a good-looking run around the right side. He had a big block, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, that was a great block. I couldn't tell what number it was. Colt McCormick on the carry gets the touchdown, but if we have a replay of that, there was a huge block. That was tremendous. So 
So the Rockets on the board first in this contest. So on to kick the extra point will be Bray Friesner. Do you feel like the humidity's gone up yes. about 200%? <laughs> yes. Okay. I was hoping <laughs> it's not it wasn't. just you. Okay, I was hoping. <laughs> Good snap, Nemeth gets it down and the kick is up and good. So the Rockets score first, seven nothing with 153 to play in the first quarter. There's the big break, taking you know advantage of a turnover yep, and, you're right. and then punching it in on a nice pitch. Coach Herb said, when, he, when I communicated with him this week, he said he feels very confident in his team. He was very excited. He said the key for them will be if they can stay healthy. If he thinks that if they could stay healthy, this could be a good season for him. And he, he, he noted that the offensive line is definitely going to be a strength. He said offensively, he feels like they have the athletes to compete with anybody, not just in the league, but anybody, uh, playoff-wise as well. So he's, uh, they've got a lot of excitement down here in Sugar Grove about this football team. Well, you know, they, they, they ended up 5-5 five and five last year, and, you know, they, they were a little disappointed, but they also had a lot of injuries and some things that just didn't go right for them. But... It's always really going to be a big factor when yeah. you have small rosters like these teams that your people stay healthy. But here's the beauty, Jared, with the playoff situation. Everybody's in. There's no points. Bernie. Right. You're not going to look in the paper or online and see points. You can win one of the six. You still win. Yep. And who knows if you get better every week, what yeah. might happen? That's one of the things uh, Coach Timmis said, and I quote, he said, as far as everyone making the playoffs, I like it, especially being a first-year head coach. However, I do take pride in football being the only high school sport that I know of where teams have to qualify to make the postseason. He said, but of course, we will take it any way we can get it, yep. and everyone getting in, is he, he feels, is just going to be temporary. Oh, yeah, he's 100% right. Uh, but the bottom line is they've made it so – with seven divisions now that the majority, really nobody that's really qualified that's really good is left out. Jared. Yeah. Jaeger will take the kickoff at about the nine-yard line, going up the far sideline and all the way up across the 30. Good return by Colton Jaeger. So the Irish will take over first and 10 at their own 30 with 145 to play in the first quarter. Yep, just got to eliminate mistakes. I mean, it, you know, sports sometimes is very simple. Make less errors than the other team, and your chances are much better. Glad you're tuned in tonight, and we are excited to be able to bring this to you live, as obviously uh, with the um, restrictions that have been placed on high school athletics, uh, not a lot, not uh, as many fans can be in attendance. So we're excited that we can bring you this opportunity to watch from your, the comforts of your couch, and I'm sure you are excited to be sitting in your couch as you watch the rain pour down here at Burn Union. It's actually been just very steady, though, Jared, yeah. and um, coming straight down, fortunately, and uh, none of that shiny stuff up in the sky right now. I wasn't going to mention it. <laughs> I didn't mention I it. I think we had a delay here a few years ago, didn't uh, we, between these two teams? Don't, don't, don't talk about that night. <laughs> Jaeger hands off to Tenza, and he's hit right away. Over on that right side, yeah, trying that. to see who made that tackle. That was immediate. Yes. I think oh. it might have been McCormick. Or Caden Moore made the tackle. Yeah. Coming out of that offense or defensive line spot. Well, you know, that, that two years ago, that was the night we came to do a football game in Burn and spent a week. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like it but just because. Between the, the delays and the well, middle. There so were long. many, many penalties. Yeah. The, the delay was long. Yeah. We had a lot of penalties. Um, it was just one of those nights where it just wasn't quite as uh, smooth as it should have been. Yeah. And that was back when every time you heard thunder or saw lightning, yes. it's 30 minutes added on. I think that's it's changed a little bit now. We can talk has. about that in a minute. Second and 10 for the Irish. Smith goes in motion. The, the snap hit him, and it's picked up by trying to see over on the far side. Smith actually picked it up. Boy, that was just – Unfortunate there. That could have been disaster. Luckily for the Irish, they were able to recover it. Yeah, right now they're just you know not a lot of rhythm, making way too many mistakes in ball handling. Yeah. And Burns' defense is aggressive. I mean, you know they they're not expecting uh, the Irish to pass at no. all. I mean they're they they they're up there eight in the box and they're physical at the initial uh, attack spots and you know really active defensively. Very impressive so far this first quarter. 
Yeah, Smith was going in motion, and the snap hit him as he was running past the, the center. And somehow he was able to cut back to the middle and fall on the football. And we have a whistle as time has expired here in the first quarter with a third down and long facing the Fisher Catholic Irish. Well, it never ends. We have our continuing sponsors that have supported us over the years. We go with Standing Stone Bank. Whether you're ready to tackle a mortgage loan or need cash for home improvements, make Standing Stone Bank the key player in your home or business financial plans. Business to business, neighbor to neighbor. Let's grow this town together. Standing Stone Bank and Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Let's, let's look at the playoff um, setup right now, Jared. We've been talking about it. Let's uh, see if we can see that here. And here you go. These are the modifications. And here's our playoff uh, scan. You know, what we talked about in the first. I'm not going to read these there, buddy. Obviously, everybody out there can fortunately read. You can opt in, but that had to be by, you know, the middle of September. And uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. The only thing I would say, and I was involved in years of uh, when, when you, the coach is seated. And my, my whole philosophy on that whole thing is be honest. Which is still how baseball does it. I know. Yeah. But my whole thing is be honest. Exactly. exactly. There were some people that always, in my opinion, I didn't feel like were doing what was the right thing yep. for the right teams. Yep. And whether my team was at the top or not at the top, do the right thing. Yeah. And uh, that would be my only concern of all that as far as seeding. But, it, but it's impossible to seed them without a point situation. Yep. And you can't compare records because there's all kinds of different leagues. Yeah. So what do you do? You let the coaches make decisions and put trust in them. You know, and I understand loyalty to friends, loyalty to your league and everything. But just, just do what's right. Do a right. little research. Watch teams play and then seed them appropriately. Check some scores from uh, other games around the area tonight. New Albany leads Lancaster 7-0 that game in the first quarter. Amanda Clear Creek leads Fairfield Union in the first quarter out in Rushville 7-0. It's Bloom Carroll over Hamilton Township 10-0 in the first quarter. And Bishop Reedy leads Liberty Union 3-0. I believe that game being played at uh, Fortress Obets, I believe, tonight. Oh. South side of Columbus. Yeah. Yep. So we'll keep an eye on those games going on tonight. For you, as you watch live here, the Burn Union Rockets hosting the Fisher Catholic Irish. The Rockets lead 7-0 as we begin the second quarter. Irish have third down and 22 as Colton Yeager rolls out to the far side, looking for some blocks and some room, but he's going to be brought down over there, trying to see who brought him down. I mean, you don't want to make another ball handling mistake in that situation, so that's a good call. Yeah. You know, punt it out of there. Get your defense on. Your defense got to go to work. You know, I'm viewing this from the Fisher standpoint. Because right, right now you're not going to get a 20-yard play against Byrne unless it's a little bit of a fluke. James Ashton did a nice job out of that linebacker spot uh, to track down Jaeger and make that tackle. You know, that was one of the spots that uh, – uh, C Coach Herbst was, was a little concerned about just younger guys with inexperience uh, in there. And, and I tell you what, Ashton did a great job right there. Hey, if you're aggressive and chase the ball, you can't be too wrong. Jaeger's punt is blocked and fallen on. Ian Staten blocked it and also fell on it. Heck of a job. So great field position here for the Rockets. Now we'll see how, you know, how Coach Herbs, a lot of people like to take something like that, Jared, and go for it immediately. Right away, yeah. Yeah, because you got a little momentum. Yeah. We'll see how Coach Herbs plays it here. We have not seen Nemeth pass yet. Well, he threw once over the middle in the end zone, I believe. But other than that, it's been a lot of runs. He's got Chris Prince behind him right now out of that pistol. And he'll give it to Prince. Prince coming left side. Did a nice cutback there and gets to the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown. Yeah, pretty easy. Pretty easy. I said cutback, but really it was almost like a let's put on the brakes because I, you know, yeah. if he cuts back on this wet turf, he might uh, slip and fall. But he did a great job there on that run. Yeah, change of speed. They slanted him. 
running to the left, run a slant, and uh, as you said, he had a nice job of slowing down and yeah. turning it back on. So, but again, excellent line play. You know, Coach Herbs, you know, has referenced his line, and, and uh, they're playing outstanding. They're good up front. Friesner on to kick the extra point. Got a late substitution coming on to block for the Rockets. Good snap, good hold by Nimeth, and the kick is up, but it is good. Well, that's a big deal because a lot of teams don't have kickers, Jared, that are accurate. Just on simple things like extra points. Yeah. They, they appear simple, but they're not. Well, Shu, one of the things that we talked about in the keys of the game was, uh, was, was mistakes and who's going to take advantage of mistakes. And right now, the Rockets have done that on both their scores. Yeah. As we said, Fisher offensively, you know, their timing's off. Their ball handling's not been very good. So, you know, you, you keep plugging along and you just got to get better. Yeah. And, and from Burns' standpoint, give them credit for taking advantage of the situation. Young fan in attendance there. This Irish team lost 14 seniors from that playoff team from last year. They had 26 on their roster, 14 graduated. So really for a long time it was wondered, are we going to have enough for a team? That was the question at uh, Fisher Catholic, and they've really had a, a lot of guys step up, and a lot of freshmen have shown interest, and uh, they actually have a, a good roster right now of 21. You mentioned Burn Union with just 25 on their roster. And, you know, in these crazy times that we've got, you know, every man counts. You know, and you've got some kids opting not to play. And so, sure. you know, anybody needs to be able to be ready to step up at any moment. Nope. If, if you're in doubt that you're going to play, this is not the year. You're right. going to get an opportunity. You're right. right. Mr. Snively, please report to the football field. We've got a stoppage on the field. Officials are going to meet with. I, I, I wonder if they saw some. Lightning behind us because it's Ooh, it dark. Is starting to get dark behind us. But you know, I so they they called out Danny Snively, the athletic director here at Burn Union. They've got uh, Coach Timmis out there as well. Of course, if they wanted Jason Roush, the athletic director from uh, Fisher Catholic, he would have to uh, come down from behind one of our cameras as he's doing double duty tonight. I could just carry it with him. Right? <laughs> Tried to turn the official mic on. He must have turned it off. I'd love to hear this conversation. There you get a look at the sky behind us. The rain has stopped, but if you look behind us, it's uh, pretty dark. I think they're out there looking at a radar right now. Looks like Snively might be looking at one. They've got the athletic trainer from Fisher Cat or from uh, Burn Union out there. If and as I said earlier, it would not be 2020 without a uh, no. <laughs> something like this on week one. Yep, we've had our we've had our share of experience with that. You know, you look across the way, and if you just can block out and see the trees above, with you know straight across from us, you know it, it looks like the Amazon over there yeah. with all the fog all, rising. Yeah, the yeah. Fog all the moisture. All moisture. All moisture. <laughs> We're taking a 30-minute delay for lightning and thunder. All right, so you heard it right there from the official right out of his mouth. A 30-minute delay for lightning and thunder on week number one here in Burn Union. Boy, I think this happened uh, just two years ago when we were down here. Yeah, there you see it. I mean, it's just kind of an eerie look around the whole, whole stadium here from front to back. So with 10.52 to play in the first half, we will have a 30-minute delay here at Burn Union High School for thunder and lightning from behind us, which when I say behind us, if you're familiar with Burn Union, the stadium and the field, uh, the home stadium faces away from the school. So we're looking out over the school behind us, and that's where it looks really, really dark. So 10.52 to play in the first half. Burn Union leads at 14 nothing. We are in a delay situation. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back with more and uh, the rest of this contest, hopefully, um, in just a little bit, uh, this is the Interface Video Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Buckeye Toyota, the hometown dealer who's here to help. Family owned for over 40 years and proudly helping with all of your automotive needs. We're honored to partner with countless schools, churches, and even local hospitals like Fairfield Medical Center. 
When it comes to hometown support, Fairfield Medical Center and the Fairfield Medical Center Foundation need the support of our community and our community sponsors like Buckeye Toyota. Thank you for calling Buckeye Toyota. How may I help you? The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. first-time parent is very nerve-wracking going into the hospital. You don't really know what to expect. The nurses, the staff, the doctors, everyone at Fairfield Medical Center was very attentive. They just put my mind at ease. They answered any questions we asked. They supported us through the whole delivery, the post-delivery, our stay in the hospital. We felt like we were part of their family. I wouldn't have put myself or my daughter in anybody else's hands. Experience Fairfield Medical Center. As a member of the Better Business Bureau, we are a Carfax Advantage dealer and offer great financing rates through a local area bank with warranties available on most vehicles. We know your time is valuable, so we take special pride in making sure that you get what you came for at a price that you can afford. Come into the Carriage Company and check out our sweet deals. Stop by today and let us help you or visit us online at carriagecompany.com. Burden Union kicked off to the Irish. Irish had a nice return, but it was called back uh, 15 yards for a block in the back. And on first down here, short gain on the play, up to about the 16-yard line. Had uh, quite the storm roll through here in Sugar Grove with lots of lightning, heavy rain. Overall hour and 40-minute delay. You know, when I saw those two guys carrying oars in, <laughs> I knew we had an issue. <laughs> the fortunate thing is this is week one, so the field right now is still in pretty good shape. But could you imagine if this was halfway through the season and the field was already chewed up? Here's Jack Tenza on the carry on second down, and that's going to be close to a first down for the Irish. And officials are moving the chains. I, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the first first down for, for Fisher Catholic tonight. I, I think you're correct. You know, maybe the break did them a little better. To you know, they had both teams obviously haven't played, but right. But the Fisher Catholic group has less experience. Yep. So maybe the break did them a little good to look at it and figure some things out here. First and ten. Ball spotted at the 22-yard line. Jaeger hands it off up the middle. Alex Smith up to the 26-yard line. Gain of about four on the play. Clock rolls at 9.13 to play in the first half. 14-0, Burn Union on top. And week number one. And at center right now for the Irish is James Bryant, six foot one, 208 pound senior. 
One of the uh, changes that we told you about early in this contest is the, the officials never touch the football, so the center takes it to the huddle and brings it back. And here's a good carry on second down, getting up to about the 30-yard line to bring up a third down and three for Fisher Catholic. <clears throat> Yeager breaks him out of the huddle. He will have Tenza behind him. Yeager working under center. Going to keep it himself. And I don't think he's got enough for the first well, down. Didn't even really get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, there was good penetration by the corner. I can't tell his number uh, because they're hard to see. I think number 40 for Byrne. Is there a 40? There's not a 40. Well, that tells you I, I can't tell the numbers. <laughs> it, then. They are definitely hard to see. There's living proof. But whoever it was off the corner did a good job of creating penetration, which allowed the linebackers time to get over and make the play. Burn looks really good defensively, Jared. They're, they're physical, they're aggressive, and they get to the football. Yeah, they do. And they wrap up when they tackle. Clock rolls a 719. Irish in punt formation. Jaeger to punt it away. Good snap, end over end punt for Jaeger will be taken at the 36 yard line by Friesner. And good pursuit by the Irish will bring him down all the way back at the 34. Nice job by Fisher Catholic's punt coverage team. He got a good bounce, but uh, he started going east to west instead of north south. Jared <laughs> gave the coverage team too much time to get there. Ben Boyden in on the stop for the Irish. Gives Burn Union first and 10 at their own 30, 34 yard line. Leading 14 0 here in the second quarter. Nemeth still working out of that pistol formation. Little screen pass out to Chris Prince. Prince. Getting to the outside, but not much there as a flag comes in. Great job over on the corner for the Irish. That's making the tackle, Kavanaugh Frank. Fisher playing a little more physical here they this are. half. You know, offensively, I thought they were a little more physical in the run game, and here they did a nice job. Hey, everyone, I'll make sure they're ready. I'll take that one. Cool. They took the penalty. I didn't hear what it was. That's my fault. I didn't uh, get the ref's mic turned on in time, but it was on Burn Union, so it backs him up. Yeah, with it being, I don't know whether it's five yards or more than five. If it was more than five, it's probably a hold. But I think, I think we had I think a it was procedure. just a five yard, yeah. I think it was a procedure or shift problem. Nemeth hands off to Prince, and Prince across the 30. Short gain on the play. Stop made by Chase Springer. Well, I tell you what, you, you you know what, when you go in and you they've had an hour and 40 or even longer to yeah. warm up break, that's requiring a lot for them to refocus, and um, we'll see what they decide on halftime here, Jared. Nemeth will keep it himself, trying to just follow his blockers, trying to get to the outside. Kavanaugh Frank brings him down, but I think he's going to get called for a uh, horse collar there. Yeah, I think you're right. Good Good penetration again, good pursuit, but you cannot grab them by the back of the shoulder pads and, and pull them down from behind. Sometimes that's, that's incidental, and uh, sometimes it's discipline. Yeah. That one goes from it would have been a third down and long. Now it's a first down. Well, that's a very dangerous tackle. It is. You, you know, you're, you're going to pull somebody down by the back of their shoulder pads. That's, that's pretty scary. First and 10, Rockets. Nemeth back to pass. Screen pass out again to Chris Prince. Prince jumps over one would-be tackler and then just runs over another one and gets all the way down to the 39-yard line of Fisher Catholic. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 
Okay. That's why. <laughs> first and ten Rockets. Clock rolls at 5.39 to play in the first half. Nemeth hands it the first man through. That's Colt McCormick. McCormick with full speed ahead gets across the 35. Down to about the 34. He ran the ball hard with the line. 77. Job, Jared, Keep your hands I, I even call out it. of the jerseys. It was a hole. But as you said, he was shot out of the Yes, game. he was. And you like Switch me sides, Jason. Run the football hard like that. North Switch me sides. I'm supposed to go to the wide side. <clears throat> Second down and four for Burn Union. Nemeth hands it off to McCormick again. Nice move by McCormick. And still on his feet. I think he's got enough for a first down. Yeah, too, too, just too many missed tackles. You have to go off. Play. I mean, you, you have to make those tackles when you penetrate like that. You need to sell it. His helmet came off. It was a good job by <coughs> Fisher defense of getting there, but you, you've got to wrap people up and, and you've got to tackle. I'm not saying it's easy. But if you want to be successful defensively, you, you have to know how to. So first down? The basic fundamental of defense. First down. First down. Let's move the stakes. <clears throat> first and 10. For the okay, Rock. let's wind it. Fumble, and the Irish have it. Just a bad exchange from center to quarterback, I believe. And it was fallen on by Jack Tenza. That's a big break and, that the Irish needed. Sure is. Now they need to capitalize here with just under five minutes to play okay. in the first half. <clears throat> Burn, you got to be disappointed because you really right had here. a nice drive. Yeah, you're right. Let's go. Let's go. Of course, it was aided by a penalty also. But, you, you know, they, they look solid. <laughs> So Jaeger will huddle them up, see what they can come up with here. First and 10, Fisher Catholic, 421 to play in the first half. They've got the ball on their own 32-yard line. <coughs> Jack Carpenter now in the game for the Irish. He splits out wide to the left side. Carpenter, recent transfer from Lancaster. He's a junior. Jaeger hands it off to Jack Tenza right up the middle and a nice run by Tenza to get up near the 40. Good thrust from the offensive line and good physical running by Jay. Second down and three for yeah. Fisher Catholic. I was talking to somebody and you know, I happen to, fortunately I know Coach Buttermore because we were both coaching in school at the same time. And, you know, one of the assistants told me, we only run five plays. We just have lots of formations to yeah. run five plays, but they all know what they're doing that way. Right, that's, we, and that's the key. We don't try to confuse them. We just show different formations, so we hopefully can get an advantage. Here's Tenza again. Near the first down, but I think it's going to be short got, by Tom? about a yard. Third and down. Third down coming up for Fisher Catholic. Third and one. Clock at 329 and counting here in the first half. And I think they're going to move it back a little oh, bit. Oh, they are, aren't they? Yeah. So it's third and two. We got three minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, we used to play in the backyard when the center would have the ball, and he, he, if he touched the quarterback's yeah. hands, then you could run. Yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't think that's in, <laughs> in the rules this year. Third down and two for Fisher Catholic. Jaeger, I think there was a bad exchange there. The ball was Fourth. on the ground. They picked it up and falls forward. First down. Not enough for the first down. First down. You see it there on the far side. Oh, no, they are waving it first down. Wow. All right. So move it ahead. First down for the Irish. Under three minutes to play in the first half. I just, I'd say go Okay, let's wind it. So I was going to, too, yeah. Yeah, you got a young team. <clears throat> they need to learn to be more physical. They need to you know, learn a lot of things offensively. And the only way they're going to get that experience is on a game day. Yep. 
You know, we're talking to Coach Young at halftime. It's, it's just about repetition. You have to do it repetitively enough, and you have to do those repetitions well to get better. First and 10. Here's Tenza. Pushing forward almost near midfield. Second nice half. run by Jack Tenza. Well, the thing he got is low leverage, Joe. Yep. And, and low man wins in football. You get lower, you, you're going to have more success than the person <coughs> that you're going against. And we have a timeout on the field. Burn Union will take one. Timeout, guys, timeout. by the Carriage Burn Company. Burn Union. Located at 1031 timeout. North Memorial Drive. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. And let's say thanks to Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive. And remember, every one of our football games will be televised with their instant replay immediately after the game at the Buffalo Wild Wings Lancaster location. Check some scores from around the area. I, I'm assuming that there have been some other delays uh, due to weather, as a lot of these are still in the first half. Lancaster and New Albany tied up 13-13 in the second quarter. Listen to this score, Shoe. Fairfield Christian leads Green 39-6 in the fourth quarter. The Knights looking for their first win, and I believe – over 30 games. So what a what a night it would be for them to come out with a victory. And I believe they come down here to Sugar Grove next week. Yeah, I think you are correct. So, you know, good for them because, you know, you have to admire people that can endure and stay with it. And uh, I can't remember the head coach's uh, name, but there was an article in the Gazette before all this stuff went on. I, I was really impressed what he coach had to Turner? say. Coach Turner? Coach yeah. Turner. Seth he Turner, a, I think it he is. He had a lot of good things to say, Jared. And I, I don't necessarily mean about individuals, right. but just how to approach things yep. in life. I've had the opportunity to talk with him a couple of times. My son actually went to a camp there a couple of years ago, football camp, and just a, a, a really great person. Offense. So uh, congratulations to them as they will start in the offense tonight as we have a penalty here. Get the call from the official. Focus, focus, focus. Other scores, Bishop Reedy leads Liberty Union 6-0 <coughs> at halftime. And I believe that's, that's all I have for now. Continue to check on those scores <coughs> around the area. That Lancaster New Albany game tied up at 13. We'll check that one in a little bit. Second down and eight. The Fisher Catholic 201 to play in the first half. Jaeger under center. Here comes Alex Smith. And he takes the handoff to hit immediately. 45 and 53. That's Chris Delgado, 53, and Garrett Carpenter, 45, making That's the third down. Rockets. Well, Double stakes. We don't have to respect anything downfield right now. We just make no opportunity then. I have no problem. That's fine. That's fine. But it does put a strain on the line. And secondary blockers because there's just too many people. Burns defenders, like I said earlier, they're, they're good. They, they pursue the ball, they're aggressive. They're getting lined up the way they want to get lined up. When you look at the number in the box here, when you look at this, I mean, there's, there's eight guys in the box here. They're down in 12. Jaeger drops back to pass. He has Tenza out there. And incomplete. Tenza was hit as he was trying to haul it in. So it brings up a fourth down and 12 for Fisher Catholic. Yeah, you kind of got to punt it down. You don't want to give him the football at the 40 yard line if you're viewing it from a Fisher Catholic standpoint. And I'd say, Burn, you already got one block tonight. Why not go for another one here with a yeah. minute to go in the half? Might turn the, you know. Turn the whole thing around. Yep. So Jaeger will drop back to punt. Back to receive it, Sammy, Sammy Amna and Bray Friesner for the Rockets. Under a minute to play in the first half. That looks like they're setting up for a return. Short kick. Takes a bounce, a Fisher Catholic bounce, all the way up to about the 39-yard line of Burn Union. 
What I don't understand, Burn only rushed three guys, and, and one guy came unblocked, Jared. I, you know, again, I think those are things that they just have not been able to get through yeah. with the time they've had and with the, with the roster size that, you know, when they're sending three guys really hard at the punter, you, you should be able to get that block. Right. So the Rockets a little bit of time to work with here. And still two timeouts left. 55.9 seconds showing on the clock. Nimeth with McCormick to his right. Fires back across to this side to Amna. And a nice move by Sammy across the 50 to the 40. Still on his feet and finally knocked out of bounds at the 30 by Kavanaugh Frank. Yeah, just, just a good job of running and again, missed tackles, Jared. Just not breaking down and making a tackle. And I, I, I'll tell you, Nemeth did a good job of getting the ball there, but the man rushing him never put his hands in the air. Yep. He had clear vision of where he wanted to throw. And when, in any sport, if you want pressure, you got to pressure where the ball is. If the ball's above the quarterback's head, your hands have to be in that position. First and 10, Rockets. Nemeth with McCormick behind him. And movement early. Hey, let's go! Got a little procedure on the offense. Backs him up to the 33 yard line. Looks like the center just keeps going more forward and f with that football when you don't have somebody in there spotting it for you. Nimeth back to pass, wide open down the field. Nice catch and run. I believe that's Ian Staten. Is that number eight? I can't tell. No, it was number two. That's Bray Friesner on the reception. A nice looking play by the Rockets. Gets him down inside. The 20-yard line with 35.4 seconds to play in the first half, and they call a timeout. Well, the pass was good by Namath, but yeah. you know what? Friesner did a great route running. Yes, there, he Jerry. did. He executed it. He ran it hard, drove the defender off, and came back and caught the football. That's, that's good offensive play. I want to invite you to stick around at halftime. We will have the halftime band show coming up, and uh, you'll want to see the Burn Union Rocket Band. You'll want to hear them. J.D. Latore, the director, always does a fabulous job with their band. That halftime band show will be brought to you by Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, Crematory and Monuments, family-owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. Halftime band show will also be brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers, and our community, we go above and beyond to help. Personal or business banking, whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So the Rockets call a timeout after the nice gain on the pass play all the way down to about the 15-yard line. Yeah, that was great execution of pass and catch. I, I, I really like seeing good fundamental things from the offensive players. That, that's exciting right there. Nemeth with three receivers out to the left, one to the right. McCormick stands behind him. Nemeth with all kinds of time. He's going to tuck it in and run down to the 10-yard line, inside the 10, to the 5. And thrown down inside the five at about the two-yard line. The official going to wind the clock. He did not get out of bounds. So we're down to 21 seconds. They stopped it. Stopping long enough to spot the football and move the chains, or the down marker, that is. Oh, got to get it going. There you go. Now Push they're it. winding it at 20 seconds. First and goal. Nimeth keeps it himself, and it's a touchdown, Burn Union. And now we have a flag coming in late. Looks like we had some jawing going on. We'll hear from the official. Here we go, Jason. Jason. What do we have? 
What do you have, personal foul? Personal foul, On the defense. Number 11 on the defense. Okay, we're going to enforce it on the kickoff. We're going to enforce it on the kickoff. So you heard it, personal foul and sportsmanlike on the Irish. They will enforce the penalty on the kickoff. And the kick is up and good. And another flag comes in, and another. This is what you don't want to see. We saw this happen two years ago down here with just multiple penalties on both sides. Personal foul. So we got, Mac, we got 30 yards on the kickoff. Another personal foul on the defense. So personal foul again on the Irish, so it's going to be 30 yards worth of penalties on the kickoff. Well, the worst thing you can do is lose your composure. Yep. You know, and that comes from discipline, and I'm sure Coach Timmis will address that because those situations do not help your team. And that's what players forget. And he is definitely addressing it right now. He's got him huddled up over on the sideline. I'm, I, he's not happy at all. Well, you shouldn't be. Um, there's no excuse for it. Um, sports are emotional, they're competitive, and you have to keep a good head Yep. because those kind of infractions hurt the team. And, again, players have to be taught that and understand it. Those of you watching live, I want to welcome you back. We've had uh, all kinds of, uh, I guess, drama, not on the field, but off the field with weather, and then we had some uh, technical difficulties as we've had <laughs> cars running over our, uh, our wires running across the the ground and breaking the wires so we're, we're finally back up uh, we thank you for sticking around and joining us live here and we're, we're happy to be able to provide this as obviously with the crazy times we're in and um, not being able to have uh, full capacity at the stadiums many of you uh, forced to watch it at home so we're glad you're with us 21 nothing is a score 10.4 seconds to play in the first half and as i mentioned coming up as the halftime band show you want to stick around for that the burn union rocket marching band will be on the field you can see a shot right there into the huddle. Coach Temis taking a nice long time talking to his team about discipline, which is one thing you just mentioned, Shu. There's just no excuse, Jared. And, and you know what? Kids will make mistakes, and you have to address it. And if the mistakes continue, you address it another way is that you don't get applied. Yep. So, but, you know, you got to teach them. That's what part of coaching and, and the whole educational part of this is, is – you have to explain it to them. Right. And why it's bigger. The game is bigger than you as an individual. So, shoot with the with the rules the way they are, with the uh, the personal fouls, now when a player gets his second, he's out of the game. Is that up to the the, the head referee to keep track of those? Because, well, you know, sometimes when we have our microphone up still and you can hear the yeah. official, they'll, ask, they'll, they'll say that's his first. So who's yeah. in charge of enforcing that or, or keeping track of that? I'm not sure exactly who in the crew, but there is a person who keeps track of the number of the person. Not seeing this too often, kick off from the other team's 30. <laughs> he might try to boot it through the uprights. He did. And it's good. <laughs> <laughs> So it'll be a touchback. The Irish will take the football with 10.4 seconds, most likely a, a kneel down and go to halftime. That would probably regroup. be the wisest thing to do. It's not like you need a long break, though. No. We already had a, an hour and 40 minute. What are we in hockey here? You get three, what, you get three breaks, two yeah. breaks? You know, actually, with all the stuff going on this year, I got into watching a lot of it and yeah. have watched a lot. Of course, you know, we have our local team, the Blue Jackets, who – I love the effort that they give. You know, yeah. you can debate all the other details and that stuff, but I've really gotten into and enjoying it because it requires discipline mm -hmm. to keep you out of the penalty box. And again, all those penalties do is give another team an advantage. Right. And those are life lessons. Jaeger hands it off to Tenza. And he gets up to about the 24 yard line. And time will expire here in the first half with the Burn Union Rockets on top, 21-0 over the Fisher Catholic Irish. Stay tuned. Coming up, the Halftime Band Show brought to you by the Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Fairfield Federal. You'll want to see J.D. LaTorre's Marching Rockets coming right up 
on the Interface Video Productions Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, North Body Shop, Park National Bank, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Sheridan Funeral Home, Buckeye Toyota, and Standing Stone Bank.
There's teams in the American League, they're used to that, you know. Right. Where they're not, they can get the pitching, but I'm driving the Yankees are starting to really, because I would really see them have to be a six seed or something. Well, they got to go on the road and get them out of Yankees. Because I like double players. I mean, Did you know that two-thirds of teens and young adults who report abuse of prescription medicines are getting it from people they know, including friends and family?
We need to remember to secure them in a safe place, even lock them up if necessary. Monitor your medications so you know exactly how many pills are in each bottle. And finally, keep track of your refills. If you are done with their use, properly dispose them to avoid abuse. You can do this in a number of ways. One, take them to a local drop box at the Lancaster or Pickerington Police Departments or at one of our drug take back events. Two, take the drugs out of their containers, mix them with cat litter or used coffee grounds in a container, seal and place them in the trash. Remember to remove all personal information from your pill bottles. Or three, check the prescription information regarding the specifics if the medication could be flushed or call your pharmacist. Remember, if you are done with its use, properly dispose to avoid abuse. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. And we hope you enjoyed the halftime entertainment provided by the Burn Union Rocket Marching Band under the direction of J.D. LaTorre. Tell you what, Shu, they are a phenomenal band. They, uh, they sound like they did not miss a beat um, from all the time off. Very well done. Halftime score, 21 nothing. Burn Union over Fisher Catholic. We will uh, get underway with second half momentarily. The officials had the captains out to the middle of the field. And they uh, had some, some discussions with coaches. And we are, looks like uh, now, Shu, as I look out into the lights, looks like a little bit of light rain starting to fall again. Goody, goody, huh? Yeah, it's what we need, more rain. Tim, I know you're going to enjoy this. Uh, you and I are both baseball fans, Reds fans, and my son is texting me updates about the Reds. <laughs> He says it's the ninth inning. Reds are winning 6-2. to two. They put in Robert Stevenson. He gives up a two-run home run, then a solo home run. Now they're only winning by one run and bringing in Jose, uh, Rice Hill Iglesias. Fabulous. <laughs> uh, Talk about making your hair go gray. <laughs> I hear you. Been a Reds fan all my life, and I had one year that I could root for them. I was born in 75 when the big red machine was, you know, in their heyday. So I obviously don't remember that. I've, I watch, I've watched plenty of film of that. But, you know, 1990 is uh, yeah. my favorite year ever, well, obviously, can, as a Reds I fan. I imagine why. <laughs> I was a freshman in high school. Jaeger takes the kickoff at the 11-yard line, and a flag comes flying in. And he gets up across the 20. Let me guess. Block in the back. Illegal block. On returns. No, on the return. Yep, you're right, Shu. It's, it's a, again, it's a discipline and understanding. It doesn't, those those 10 or whatever yards they end up being because it's taken from the spot, Jared, are more important than you making a block. And and that's, that's a hard concept for young people sometimes because yeah. they're giving good effort, but they have to understand the difference. So the Irish will be backed up. They'll start this drive at their own 15-yard line. And you know the chance of teams driving the ball over 70 yards for touchdowns is extremely low. Especially when you don't have much of a passing game. Well, even if you don't, it's not that easy, Jared. If you look at statistics high school-wise. It's a nice hole on the right side. Jack Tenza finds it and gets up near the 20. You would be very surprised. Um, I have a neighbor who coaches – Helps with the football pro a, a football program here locally yeah. in, in our area, and he said they've done some numbers and it, it's extremely low that teams drive the ball more than 70 yards and get touchdowns yeah. in high school. I said, well, that ought to tell your people, especially your your players, that here's what we have to make them do. Then, if that you got to play the odds at some point a little bit there. Give up the middle. Nice job by the Burn Union defense to stop this one. 
Okay. Stop led by 45. That's Garrett Carpenter. Yeah, I think he's still got three yards, but, but I like the physicality. We could hear the pads pop up here. And we weren't hearing that in the first right. half. Because as, as we've said, Burn is good defensively. Not saying they're not good offensively, but their defense really stands out to me, Jared. So third down and three. Shoe Reds update. Gavin texted the Reds one. They pulled it out six five. They held off the, it the out Cubs or, charge or held on from the edge of the <laughs> they cliff. They did. They held yeah. on for dear life. Jaeger gives to Tenza. Tenza bowls forward, and I think he might have got it, depending on where that. No. Nope, nope. They're holding up fourth down, aren't they? That's close. Yeah, big decision right here. You're already down twenty-one nothing. You need reps offensively. You know what? That, but you know what? Now they're moving it forward. They are. I, you know, you got to wonder with with the, <laughs> you know, with with how things have changed for this year, and the officials not having contact with the football, and they're kind of just eyeballing it with their feet and telling the, the center where to put the football. How much does that come into play on spots like that, real close ones? And how are they going to measure if they yeah. can't touch the football? Well, and especially since it's all new to them. Right. I mean, it's not like they have experience at doing Exactly. This. So first and ten, Irish, I believe just their second first down of the game. Jaeger again hands to Tenza. Runs behind the middle of that line and a pickup again of about five on the play. Actually a little closer to six on the on the carry. Man, you establish some physicality. You, you teach your kids how to run a few plays well here, and I like what I'm seeing. But Jack Tenza, is a, he's a tough kid, six foot, 208 pound junior, and he's only 15 years old. Technically, still could be a, a sophomore, but just a big kid. And on top of that, just a top notch individual as well. You ever think sending him back a grade? You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> have an extra year of eligibility. Yeah, let's red shirt him. <laughs> It does make a difference um, in athletes. Jaeger sends Smith in motion, then gives to Smith, trying to get to the outside, gets across the 30. Short gain, if any, on the play. Yeah, good effort offensively, but again, Burns' defense is so good laterally. Yep, they hard. are. They get there, they get to the ball, and it's more than one of them. Yep. They're strong. So third down and three. It's kind of strange not having um, like Marion not down there. It is. You know, I mean, yeah. he gave such good insight. And also, on top of that, you know, he, he could pick up some things right there that we just are not available. Yep, not able know. to see from no. our vantage point. Yeah, not at all. Clock rolls at 7.56 to play in the third. Jaeger. Again to Tenza. Tenza trying to bowl forward, and he's got the first down across the 35. You hear Coach Tenza over on the sideline. Let's go, let's go. Or Coach Temis, not Coach Tenza. Coach <laughs> Tenza coaches baseball. <laughs> well, we get a moment here. I'll give you a... Coach Timmis story. That's quite the name at Fisher Catholic, isn't it? There's been quite a few um, young people named Timmis that yep. have had success at Fisher Catholic or. And Coach Timmis will call a timeout, so we'll give you an yeah. opportunity to tell that Timmis story. Well, let me tell you a funny story. Luke was a very good high school football player, mm -hmm. and he goes to Muskingum. And back in the day, I used to get up on Saturday mornings and just go watch Division Three football in our area. Very good football, whether you go to the High Conference or the North Coast Conference. And I saw Muskingum was playing up at Denison in Greenville. And for us, where we live, that's not very far. Yeah. And I knew Luke was from Fisher Catholic. Didn't know Luke and his family. But I thought, oh, I'll go up and watch. And he was a fullback in an I formation situation, which basically means – the tailback's going to get the ball out. We're going to feature him. It's kind of like the old USC right, teams. Right, right. 
And Denison had good football. Coach Piper, who I did get to meet because I had worked up there for a while, um, he was good. He was a great coach. But I'm telling you, I watched from the sideline because you could get pretty close down there. And plus, since I had been involved before, they would allow me on the track. And I watched Luke Timmis for four straight quarters not get the ball hardly ever handed to him. But he was the lead blocker taking on the middle linebacker mm, every time. Wow. And I'm telling you, it was great football because it was clean yeah. and it was physical. And I would have to say to this day that I think Luke won that challenge. That's that awesome. Day. That's awesome. Jaeger pitches back to Smith, and the ball's loose on the field, and it's recovered yep. by Burn Union. Yep. Their ball handling just has not been good. Pitch was a little bit behind yeah. Smith. You know, all, all that all that stuff is, is, is critical, and you just got to spend time and get repetitions. You know, yeah. we, we, we're actually being re repetitious ourselves in saying that, but, but it, is the, it is the key, the fundamentals. And one of them is ball handling. Yep. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you, when you coach baseball, and, and if you make too many errors, your chances aren't going to be very good. Exactly. It's hard enough to get three out sometimes, yep. alone four or five. Yep. First and ten Rockets. Chris Prince stands to the left of Nimeth. Nimeth will keep it himself. And up across the 20-yard line, another first down for Burn Union. Yeah, for a sophomore, you can tell last year was big. Yes, him. it was. Because now he, he looks like an upperclassman, even though he's not. Yep. I mean, he's playing like it, Jared. He's making the reads. He's keeping the ball. He's calling the offense. That pass batted away at the line of scrimmage by Jack Tenza. But you saw what Tenza did that we talked about didn't happen earlier. There was pressure on the pass. Yeah. He blocked the vision, but not only blocked the vision, he blocked the ball. And there is a Fisher Catholic player down on the field right now. They desperately cannot afford injuries, and that is one of their big guys, uh, Carter, or check that, Waylon Yeager, 6'2", 253-pound junior. And the trainer, Danielle, out there taking a look at him. Hopefully he'll be all right. In all honesty, it, it, it's almost surprising that there aren't more leg injuries with all the entanglement in, yeah. within a what two a two yard uh, space yep. with ten ten large people <laughs> and people getting knocked over and pushed that there aren't more leg injuries. Jaeger goes off under his own power. Six fifty five to play in the third quarter. Twenty one nothing Burn Union. And they've got the football driving, second down and 10. Not sure I've ever been to a football game this quiet, Tim. No, I heard crickets <laughs> earlier over there I, on the other too. side. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not for lack of fans. I mean, yeah, there's you know not as many as we would normally have in this game, but there's still quite a few here. Well, Here's Nimeth. Nice carry here, getting to the outside and getting to the goal line for a touchdown. Yeah, he showed speed right there. Yes, he did. Not only did he make a great cut, he showed speed. He looks like an upperclassman, Jared. Impressive. He is. He looks good. He does look good. Six foot, 190 pound sophomore. And you know what? He runs it so well. And and you know what? Coach Herbs will will you know he'll view all that, and he he's happy with all that, and he'll continue to push him to get better in those areas. But he also knows they've got to have to. If you're going to be really good offensively, you've got to be able to put it in the air also and be effective. Yep, you're right. Friesner to kick the extra point. And it is up and it is good. Yep. So 6.45 to play in the third quarter. Burn Union now up 28 nothing. Perfect night for Friesner. Yeah. Four for four and extra points and yep. had a great pass and catch situation. Yep. Check some scores from around the area tonight. Games that are still going on and maybe some that have uh, finished up at halftime. Bloom Carroll over Hamilton Township, 10-0. New Albany leads Lancaster 20-13 in the fourth quarter. Bishop Reedy leads Liberty Union 6-0 in the fourth quarter. It is Fairfield Christian picking up their first win in 
30 some games, 39 to eight. Congratulations, Coach Turner and the Fairfield Christian Knights on picking up that win over Green, the Green Bobcats tonight. So those are the scores that we have as of right now. How about this score, Shoe, from the OCC, Reynoldsburg over Gahanna, 41 to 14 in the third quarter. Wow. Reynoldsburg's really had a good run here, though, Jared, in the last five years. And here's one of, of interest as well. Harvest Prep, who was uh, we saw them last year in the playoffs, looked really good. They are holding on to a five-point lead, 30-25, to 25, against uh, Buckeye Valley tonight. It's third quarter. Big games in the Mid-State. You know, Mid-State has um, seven, seven teams in the division, so all six games are late games, yeah. you know. Northmore leads Grandview Heights 34-0. Worthington Kilbourne over Canal Winchester 13-7. Columbus Academy all over Whitehall 38-0. Wow. That game in the third quarter. Grove City picks up a win tonight. 7-6 over Central Crossing. And that's a rival. Yeah. Both in Southwestern School District. Kickoff goes... Out of bounds. Yep, spot 35, I believe. So at this point, if you're Coach Temis, down 28 nothing, 6:45 to go in the third quarter. You're, you know, you got a chance to try to uh, work on some things. This kind of this just becomes a, a preparation right here. You, you got to take it. This is um, better than what you can get in practice when you've got oh. limited guys. You can't even go 11 on 11 in practice. No, this is good for them. Um, you know, as we said, and, you know, we talked about the tournament stuff uh, the, or the postseason yeah. playoffs, however you want to phrase it. I mean, you're in. So you've just got to get better. Well, yeah. you know what? you got six minutes and 45 seconds in the third quarter and 12 minutes in the fourth quarter to get better. And as you said, how better can you get when you have some of the best competition across the community you might see for quite a while? Right, yep. So let's get better. Let's get more physical. Let's learn to handle the football better. Let's make sure we're getting the right blocks. Let's have better communication. Jaeger hands it off to Tenza up the middle. You know, Short gain on the play. People always look at the end result, Jared. Here comes another flag coming in late. And you got to remember, we'll let the officials sort this out. Huddle up, huddle up, come here. Come here. He on my arm. Number 50 when he was on the ground. Officials are going to huddle up and have a converse, conversation about it. That personal foul on number 50. So it's against Burn Union. What do you do? He's. Hey, what? Was it 50 or 15? 50. 50. He stepped on him when he was down. Intentionally. <clears throat> so I'd like to see Coach Church take him out of the game now. I agree. He got the explanation that he asked for from the official. He, I heard the official say he's lucky said I didn't he, toss right, him. Right. He, the player stepped on, on him intentionally. And my guess is that's what the, the little conversation was at, at, by the officials in the middle of the field, yeah. the, deciding if they wanted to toss him or not. Probably. But he should definitely be on the sideline right now. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand that. You don't have to, you know, the crime or the punishment's got to fit the crime, Jerry, but you've got to take them off the field or yep. off the court when they commit those kind of things. And I'm not saying that just about Coach I will say that about any coach. I don't care if he's coached 50 right. years or one year. Exactly. That is part of the protocol and them learning how to be a player. There's Tenza again up to the 45 of Burn Union. Bring up a second down and about eight. Clock continues to crawl at 5.56 to play in the third quarter. Seems like the longest third quarter ever, doesn't it? In the history of the world, Jared, <laughs> only. It's not like we haven't been here since. Um, and not complaining, people. We are <laughs> thrilled to be here. 
But an hour and 40 minute delay has yeah. just taken a little bit of the zest off of it, I would say. Not for us, but you can kind of see it even in no fan noise. Right. I'm not sure some people have moved since the third quarter started. I look around, and there's some people in launchers that have not moved. <laughs> Frozen. I, yeah, I mean. Even I, though it's not cold. Yeah, no. I mean, they haven't even moved their head. Right. I'm like, you're just kind of numb because it was everybody got wet, and it got kind of steamy, and now it's just kind of. Yep. You know, we talked about uh, how, how quiet it seemed. One of the, the strange things that's going to be – you know, in all these football games that we'll do um, this fall is no student sections, you yeah. know, and you know, say what you want. I mean, you know, whether you agree, disagree, it, it, it's sad. It's sad for, you know, not just the players on the field, but for the students who look forward to going and, and cheering on their teammates. Well, it's just different. I don't care if you take away sports or you take away extracurricular musical things yeah. like band and choir. You take away uh, performing arts, plays, that affects our youth. Absolutely. And they need it. Absolutely. And we need to try to provide it. Yep. And I, I love that we're trying to do this. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you never know until you try it. Right. And I think if you can get people to understand that it's important that they follow the guidelines so they don't ruin it for kids, that's really important. Yep. On fourth down. Tenza up the middle, and he's going to be close to a first down. Going to depend on, I guess, not the spot, but the foot, <laughs> where, where he puts his foot. Well, they're showing the ball going the other way. Yeah, they're, they're pointing the other way, so he did not make it to the first down marker. So first and ten, Burn Union. Nemeth will break the huddle. Colt McCormick back in the ball game. He stands to the left of Nate Nemeth. And loose football. And Nemeth just falls on it smartly. It's going to be a big loss on the play. Second down and... 15 coming up. You know, you're talking about how it seems like it's been a long quarter, but, you know, part of that is, Jared, we're also not conditioned ourselves to be as engaged right. in a, something. When, you, when, you, when you're in our role, you got to be engaged in what's going on. I think that's part of us needing a little practice. Nice. Nemeth back to pass. A nice pass and a nice catch by Bray Friesner. Friesner's going to break this yeah. one. He's got a touchdown, a nice job on the catch and run after the catch. Yeah, Friesner's been really good. He has. Does a nice job high pointing the football, catching it with his hands and bringing it in. Nah, he, he ran that route earlier, which we spoke of, and he did a good job there. And give Namath credit, too. He put it right on the money. Yeah. But Friesner really impresses them. And he's got speed. Yeah, he does. So now if he's not out of breath, he gets to kick the extra point. <laughs> he's perfect on the night, as you mentioned. This one also up and good. So with 2.43 to play in the third quarter, the Rockets lead at 35 to nothing. And with that score, we are over the 30-point mark. And so we will have a running clock until the, 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 the score would go back under a 30-point deficit. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know what you do there, really. I mean, I, I think you just got to give Byrne credit. Um, they made the play. Well, I, you know, it's just as much them trying to work yes, on things as well. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they've got a thin roster, too. Yeah, and I think from Coach Herb's point, that's smart. I mean, you, you know, people say you shouldn't be throwing the ball. Right. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for these two football teams. 
Of course, uh, obviously abbreviated schedules. There you go. Fisher Catholic. Now this is Burns. Oh, schedule. Oh, yeah, Burn Union. Yep, they host uh, Fairfield Christian, and I'm not going to read the rest of it to you, but uh, you can see they have uh, two non-league games in there. Or no, actually. Actually, Miller is now part I'm of the league. I'm sorry, I meant yeah. uh, one with Caldwell, who is traditionally very good. That'd be a good challenge for him, but they do get to play him here. He get four out of six at home, and here's Fishers. Three and three every other week. Yep. Road home, road home. But again, when you look at when I sit here and look at their team, you just have to make a thrust, and you got to sell them on getting better. And you got to be much better next week than this weekend. Yeah. Most of the time in football, the greatest improvement you see is from week two, one to week two. And that's where Coach Herb's going to have his challenges. He's got to make sure they're better. Yep. Because if you stay the same, you're in trouble. Kickoff again goes out of bounds. That's two in a row. Now, if that's what you're planning, that's fine. But if that's not what you're planning, that's twice in a row, yeah. then you have to correct that. Yep. You know, those type of things, all those details. Winning and being successful, and it's not all about winning, but being successful is in the details, Jared. Mm -hmm. Doing the little things that make you good. Sometimes players get a little bored with this over and over. But boy, if you do it well, you know, just like we talked before, Run five good plays and run them great. Run yeah. them great. So the Irish with first and ten. They trail at 35 nothing, 243 to play in the third quarter, but we will have now a running clock. Jaeger takes the high snap, looking to pass. Got a little bit of pressure. Fires one to the middle of the field, and a nice job coming back, but he could not hang on. And 10 receiver was Jack Carpenter, and now a flag comes in. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. In okay. Push the foul on the offense. I'm really disappointed in, in seeing these type of things by either team, Joe. That's it's not what it's about. And if you're undisciplined, you're not going anywhere. Well, what's frustrating is, it, you know, I'm just going to say it. It's these two teams every single year this happens. Yeah, but that's not. We do this game every year. And, and it happens every year. It's very, very frustrating to watch. Well, I've watched it a longer time than that, and it didn't always happen. Right. The last three years, I guess yes. I should say. I agree, but that's nonsense. Yep. And I'm all about physicality, playing hard. But let's, you know, being stupid is not part of the, part of the uh, thing you should have going on. Jaeger, again out of that pistol formation. Again, a little bit of a high snap. Pass is overthrown, intended for Alex Smith. Fourth down and a mile. <clears throat> oh, it's third down. They changed the uh, down marker, third down. Looks like about 25. Clock rolling under a minute to play in the third. You know, I used to tell players, if you think acting in an unsporting behavior and being disrespectful and you're in a job, how long do you think that's going to last? Right. Let's put it in real life terms. Yep. Not very long. Jaeger has pressure, and the pass is behind the intended receiver incomplete. Now it'll be fourth down and 25, and that will be the last play of the third quarter as time will run out. And we will move on to the fourth. Checking some scores from around the area. Bloom Carroll still leads uh, Hamilton Township 10 nothing. 
New Albany leads Lancaster 20-13. That game still listed in the fourth quarter. Fairfield Christian, as we mentioned, picked up a win tonight, 39-8. Congratulations to the Knights. Liberty Union, how about this? They trailed 6-0 for almost the entire ball game. They win it 7-6. Congratulations to them. Yeah. That's a great game. Over Bishop Reed. They had a tough, uh, that's a great win for them. They had a tough year last year, Jared. Amanda Clear Creek and Fairfield Union postponed. They will play tomorrow at 2 p.m. Huh. I believe that game was uh, Amanda was leading 7-0 at last check. Sounds about right. So they will play tomorrow afternoon to finish that one up. You can only imagine those storms we saw to the north of us probably just oh, yeah. clear across Rushville even that much more. Yep. If you get a chance, check some um, MVL scores for us too, which are our neighboring counties here. Scam and Perry, just for. Uh, yeah, wasn't Sheridan a new Lex kicking yeah. off the, yeah. the season tonight? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Let's see what I can find here. Well, you're the master. <laughs> so the Irish face fourth down and 25. And Jaeger will be back to punt. It'll be Yamna and Friesner to receive the punt. They're standing at about the 49-yard line. And the snap goes over the head of Jaeger, and he's just going to pass one, and that's going to be a penalty. Intentional grounding in the end zone. That's just a safety, yep. right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, that's what you should do anyway, kick it out of the end zone. Yep. The last update, uh, the last score update for Sheridan and New Lexington, 28 nothing Sheridan in the second quarter. Hmm. So I don't know if that one got yeah. paused or postponed. That doesn't really surprise me. Sheridan has a very experienced line play. Yeah. Anything else in the area over that way? Um, Philo defeated West Muskingum 33-7. Okay. Let's see, uh, who'd Tri Valley have tonight? Morgan, which Morgan had, you know, they're still in a rebuilding process. Um, that won't be played tomorrow at 7.20 p.m. Yeah, so they just said heck with it and yeah. move it to the next day. Let me see who else was, uh, Maysville and Crooksville. Um... Maysville wins that one 20 to nothing over Crooksville. Okay, and there, let me see. There's John River, Glenn. Riverview and Coshocton. They're now in the MVL, huh? Yeah. They have uh, two divisions of six teams. Wow. Yeah. Let's see. So the Irish, after the intentional grounding in the end zone, will kick off from the 20. Trailing 37 to nothing. Um, nice kick, even from the 20 yard line, all the way back to the 34. Amna takes it around the side. He's got running room. He's got one man to beat, and that's the kicker. And Amna going to take it to the house for a touchdown. Pretty much created a wall, and he could. Um could have done that. Waltz into the end zone. Yeah, he could have. I mean, that was pretty simple. Well blocked, well, well executed. Not finding your river. Yeah, here we go. High scoring game, 53-24. Huh. No, well, wait a minute. That's 
That's not correct. They don't have the update uh, for the football game oh, for Riverview okay. and Coshocton. How about Meadowbrook and John Glenn? That should have been a good football game. Let's check. Both those teams are supposed to be pretty good over in Eastern Ohio. Tomorrow, 7 p.m. Yeah, they just went ahead and said heck with it. <laughs> Seems like that's what a lot of people did. Well, you know what? There comes a point where this sitting around, you know, here we're looking at a quarter yeah. to 11, and we still got 10, 11 minutes in the quarter to play, Jared. Yeah. So, you know. But the, the good thing is, is they're 10 minutes apart. So, right. You know, you at least get it in and you move on. So after the score. And the extra point by Friesner, who again remains perfect on his extra points tonight. It is now 44 to nothing. Burn Union over Fisher Catholic, and the Irish will get the football back. Last year, uh, the score was almost exactly <laughs> like this, but the other way. Fisher Catholic won 43 to nothing. Well, and that's what you want to do is you want to establish a program to where you're consistent. Yep. And, you know, both programs have not been terribly consistent. Right. And I understand, you know, you get through small classes and sometimes it doesn't always work the way you want it to work. But you got to try to develop it and, you know, give burn credit. Even last year through injuries and things, they, they did battle with at least 500. Yeah. So if that's the worst you're going to be, that's, that's, that's okay. So I think with the... Uh, Coach here, he's done a good job of, you know, getting them to where they're pretty much know what they're doing and getting it on online. You know, and Luke's going to get his opportunity now. Kickoff will be taken by Jaeger at about the five-yard line. Looking for some blockers. Jaeger, nice-looking return. And finally brought down at the 41-yard line. First and 10, Fisher Catholic. Everybody bunched in tight, handoff up the middle. Jack Tenza across a 45 yard line, pick up about five on the play as rain again begins to fall here at Burn Union. Just please, no lightning or thunder at this point. Well, if there is, um, you're going to be solo. <laughs> hey, I, I was, I brought you here. You drive my car home? <laughs> no, but I, I know where to find your keys. <laughs> Second and five for Fisher Catholic. Jaeger again right up the middle to Tenza. Pick up of maybe one on the play. Third down and four coming up for the Irish. 10-20 to play in the ball game. Coming up, we will name our players of the game, one from each team. I guarantee you there'll be no baseball tomorrow, Jared. Uh, it's not looking like not it. Looking We've had a lot of rain. Sure have. And fumbled snap. And a penalty you know, going to be called on Burn Union. A dead ball foul, encroachment on the defense, number 62. So that's a five yard penalty. It'll give Fisher a first down. Tim, I think uh, now's just as good a time as any to name our players of the game. Let's go with our uh, Fisher Catholic player of the game first. Tonight's uh, Fisher Catholic player of the game brought to you by Park National Bank. 
Fairfield National Bank has taken on our family name, Park National Bank. Park National Bank is a family of community banking teams delivering an exceptional breadth and depth of resources to individuals and businesses, providing a hands-on personalized approach to service and strong local leadership that invest deeply in the places we live and work. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, Jared, as you know, we looked it over, and it's always hard because we always have more multiple kids who have stood out or we get to recognize their effort and execution. But I think Jack Tenza, the six-foot junior for the Irish, has really stood out. He's yeah. carried the ball. He runs hard. He's been active at his linebacker position, made tackles. Um, I, I think he should represent Fisher as the player of the game. And you want to know another thing that I saw Jack do? Helping guys up off the ground that were wearing a different color than his uniform. That's, um, In a game like this where there have been yeah. multiple personal fouls, that's nice to see. You know, I used to tell players, if you want to do that, I have no problem with it. Or if you don't, I have no problem yeah. with it. That's up to you. But do not ever be unsportsmanlike or stand over right. or any of that crap. Yep. But you know what? If that's He feels that way, and you know what? More power to him. So congratulations to Jack Tenza, our uh, Fisher Catholic player of the game, brought to you by Park National Bank. Let's get to the Burn Union player of the game, brought to you by the Edwards Insurance Agency, specializing in providing personalized insurance coverage that meets the needs of our individual clients. Contact Todd or Dale Edwards today. I think this one's a little tougher. We have a couple guys that this could go to. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, Bray Friesner has really stood out. He's been great kicking the football yep. tonight. I mean, he's six for six. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. six for six from uh, extra points. Um, he's really stood out. But I, I tell you, the straw that stirs them is Nemeth. I agree. You know what? He can run. He looks confident. We talked about how he looks older than a sophomore. Um and and just has guided them tonight at a six foot, 190 pound sophomore. If he continues to work and get better, he will really be something in this in this league. Congratulations, Nate Nimeth, our Burn Union Player of the Game, brought to you by the Edwards Insurance Agency. He's had a fabulous game to open up his season. And again, you mentioned Bray Friesner as well. He's made some oh. tremendous catches and runs with the football and then his kicks as well. So not taking anything away from him either. As here, Jaeger is going to be wrestled down on fourth down and a big loss on the play. So Burn Union will take back over. First and 10 as the clock rolls down to 6.39 to play in the ball game. Clock has stopped for some reason. I was yeah. under the impression that it continues to run until it's under two minutes. I was, even on that's you know, what I thought. I even on a change of possession, yeah. but you know, I could definitely be wrong on that. They haven't started it yet. No, it's still not running. So first and ten, Burn Union. They lead at forty-four nothing. Clock still stopped at 6.39. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Nimeth they... takes a snap off the turf and a nice job breaking through the line. That was Jack Tenza. It's funny how those players of the games <laughs> always do that for us, don't they? You're right. Coming out of that linebacker spot. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate that. Second down. And 15 for Burn Union. Have a number change as Kavanaugh Frank now wearing number 70 rather than number four. I, wa I saw somebody run on the field with number 70 and didn't see a 70 on my roster, and I wondered where Kavanaugh went. Huh. So there's our answer. On second down and 15, a nice gang tackle there by Fisher Catholic leading the way for them again, Jack Tenza. Five thirty-seven to play here in the ball game from Sugar Grove. Oh. 
Game has gone final in New Albany as the Eagles have defeated the Gales 20-13 to, to open up the season. Also final, Bloom Carroll beats Hamilton Township 10-0. Wow, shout out from the Bulldogs. As I mentioned, Fairfield Christian picks up a win tonight, 39-8 to over Green. Liberty Union pulls one out, 7-6 over Bishop Reedy. They came from behind, trailed the majority of the game, 6-0. As here's Nimeth getting around the outside, takes a big hit and still keeps on going, has the first down and more. What a run by Nate Nimeth, you our player of the game. You sound like a Timex commercial right there. He takes a licking and keeps <laughs> on ticking. But we do have a flag over on the far side, and the way the officials are walking and the players are walking looks to be on Burn Union. He's got a personal foul ball. Okay. No, it's on me. <clears throat> on the what? We get the official call here. Personal foul on 64. He hit a guy, blocked him in the back away from the play. The cheap shot. He pointed toward Fisher Catholic, but the way they're, I think he means yeah. Burn Union. And that might have been, there was a player getting up slow for Fisher Catholic, a crack back block. That has to be what the call was. Wipes out that nice run by Nate Nimeth. So third down and about 22. Under four minutes to play in the ball game. Rockets lead it 44-0. Rain coming down pretty steady again. Got to say, the field here has held up pretty well for as much rain sure as we've had. Hey, little B.J. Thomas there. Raindrops keep falling on our <laughs> head, Jared. Low snap, and this play's not going anywhere after the low snap. It's going to be dropped for another loss and bring up a fourth down and long. And Burn Union will punt it. Get a chance to work on their their punts. You know, we were talking earlier, and you know, a lot of people accept the result and and say, okay, it's forty-four to nothing. Okay, uh, we're we're good. Yeah. And I think you have to be guarded in that is that you got to look at the process of how you did things. Right. And that's how you get better, Jared. You self-evaluate, honestly. Alex Smith takes the kickoff, going all the way to the opposite side of the field, and a decent return there gets him up across the 40. I know sometimes players I had, they just didn't understand sometimes. I said, well, I, I'm not about the win or the loss. I'm going to address this situation regardless of score or whatever. I don't understand why the clock keeps stopping. Well, you and I need to do a little reading to make sure we understand the running clock situation. Well, I know for a fact we've been at games where it just runs and runs yes. and runs and never stops. Yeah, I don't know. But the officials seem to have no issue here. I mean, they can see the clock. So the Irish take over first and 10. At their own 42, trailing at 44 to nothing. What's the uh, young coach of the Rams? Um, McVay. Yeah. Read an article where they evaluate every player effort on every play. Wow. And that will determine your amount of playing time. And, you know, I think when you start having those kind of expectations, that's when you make great strides. Irish going to be forced to call a timeout. I believe Jaeger was trying to count all the players, and there were not 11 out there. So they have to call a timeout with 2.11 to play in the ballgame, trailing 44 to nothing. Well, we, we've seen a lot of things. We saw a rainforest look. We've seen some of the grayest clouds, the <laughs> blackest clouds I've ever seen yeah. for a long time. I mean just had all kinds of scenarios here and uh, why wouldn't we we haven't you know it's been a crazy crazy world since 
January pretty much. Yep, that it has. So in there, look at that right there. I mean, that just shows you. Yep. This game uh, pretty much, it's definitely had uh, more rain than not. I think it's, you oh. know, if you add it up, I don't think we've had a full quarter without rain. Now, I'd be curious just from uh, – actual weather standpoint, how much precipitation have they gotten? Yeah. I mean, it just seems like a lot. I have to ask my neighbor, Jerry Messberger, if he's still watching. <laughs> what, uh, how much rain is, how much water's in his rain gauge? That's, that's, that's what I would like to hear. Here's Tenza on the carry and stood up at the line of scrimmage. Under two minutes to play. You know, when I was around Coach Crabtree, we used to have this discussion. He was a young coach at the time, and um, I used to tell him, I said, toughness isn't just being physical and all that type of stuff. Toughness has a mental aspect to it, too. Yeah. Not to commit penalties. Yep. How you, how disciplined are you under certain circumstances? That's, that's a toughness, too, Jared. And ironic you said that because one of the quotes from Coach Timmis, he said, the big lesson we wanted to get across to our players, regardless of virus or no virus, is the mental toughness it takes to play this game. And it, it won't happen in a few weeks of training. It won't happen in one game. But if you are consistent and you can demand that all season and go into your off season, demand the same things, you'll eventually get to where you need to get. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard for some people to be consistent that way. Um, I, I think if there's a candidate that can do that, I, I believe that Luke can do that um, and, and give them hope of, you know, again, like I said, you just got to get better. Sometimes it's not that complicated. Loose ball on the exchange from center to quarterback. And that'll bring up a fourth down and one. Clock at 32 seconds to play in the game. You know, I always hate, what do, what do they call that uh, at the end, of, you know, like a baseball game's 10 to nothing or whatever. What do they call that time? The, uh, what's the phrase? Not mop-up Garbage time. time. Yeah, garbage. There is no such thing. No, no. That's, that's, that, that to me is doing an injustice. Yep. No such thing as garbage time. It's all quality. I heard another really good thing as well. Obviously, in sports, there's wins and losses. But I heard a coach say, you know, we don't, we don't tell our players we lost. We tell our players we learned. That L is learned. We didn't lose. We learned. Because, well, you know, there's always something to be learned, win or lose. Well, they'll know if they if they didn't have enough points. Yeah. And and I'll be honest with you. we I can tell you, I know in my last 15 years, we never once talking about wins and losses. Right. We talked about how we're going to do things and how we're going to do them right. Now we got the fireworks going. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap it up for us here at Burn Union tonight. A long night, but a victorious night for the Burn Union Rockets as they come away in week one with a 44 to nothing victory over the Fisher Catholic Irish. They avenged that 43 to nothing loss from last year and a good start for Coach Herbs. Absolutely. Very impressive defensively. Offensively, got some weapons also. It's, it was great spending a weekend with you in one evening, Jared. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. But, uh, but no, it, you know, both teams got some things to look forward to. They both know they're going to play in week seven. Yeah. And uh, we'll see who makes progress and who doesn't in, in those areas and some of the things we talked about. I want to say thanks to our crew from Interface Video Productions tonight. Bob Campetti, our director. Donnie Ziegfeld also down in uh, one of the trucks. Shane Messina came out today and uh, set up throughout the rain and on cameras tonight. Tom Russo, Josh Messerly, and Jason Roush braving the elements uh, out in the rain tonight. Thank you to all of them, and thank you to you uh, at home for joining us live on this uh, soggy Friday night as we open up the high school football season. We've got much more to come. You want to uh, stay tuned all season long. Uh, this is your home for high school football, and uh, we'll have uh, Gales games. We'll have other teams from around the area. Make sure you uh, check out our schedule. We'll be posting those uh, online. And, uh, Tim, it's uh, good to be back. It feels great. I'm happy for the kids in the communities, Jared. Once again, your final score tonight, Burn Union 44, Fisher Catholic nothing. For Tim Shoemaker and our entire Interface Video Productions crew, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody.
IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, North Body Shop, Park National Bank, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Sheridan Funeral Home, Buckeye Toyota, and Standing Stone Bank.